reason for that, there's a huge cultural distrust between librarians abroad and librarians that are local. I think that is very difficult in Liberia and sometimes just the African setting as a whole is that older people do not trust younger people to take initiative and make the change. Good day viewers and a pleasant welcome to the Made in Liberia series. This series is going to focus on entrepreneurs in Liberia, how to own and sustain a business. If you're interested in knowing more about owning businesses in Liberia, please subscribe to this channel and tap the notifications bell. Today, we shine a light on Nas Naturals, a natural hair care brand that is owned by a young Liberian woman. Now, I am not going to tell you much about her. I'm going to turn that baton over to her. Good morning. How are you doing? Good morning. I'm doing well. How are you? I'm fine. <laughs> so can you please tell my audience more about you and the brand that you own in Liberia? Um, so my name is Sata Wahab. I'm the founder of Nas Naturals. I've been doing this for a little over four years now. And um, Nas Naturals started in 2016 as just an experiment for myself. So I went natural. I couldn't get the right products on the librarian market for my hair. And over a period of time, I did some research and I started treating my hair myself. So over time, I would give products out to my friends for free. And I realized that it just wasn't a problem that I faced, right? It was a problem that other young women in the Labyrinth society faced as well. So at that point, I'm like, okay, this could actually be something that can impact young women for the better. So that was how Nas Naturals started. So basically, Nas Naturals were into creating natural hair care products from natural ingredients like shea butter, which is locally known as donut grease, coconut oil, pumpkin oil, peppermint oil, and just other natural ingredients. Okay. So um, you created this brand as a way of helping other young women. Yeah. People like us. <laughs> Our hair can grow. <laughs> so um, what does natural hair mean to you? as a woman of color in Liberia? Um, what, what natural hair can mean to everybody individually can mean different things. But I know that, you know, when I was sort of transitioning from just being a teenager to being an adult, I wanted to be myself. I wanted to be accepted in my own body. And for me, that included the texture of my hair, the texture of my skin, who I am as a Liberian, and just embracing all of these features as an African and say, this is who I am. <laughs> and um, I'm going to be confident in who I am. That is beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's all about being authentically yourself and choosing exactly. yourself, defining beauty, setting your own standards, and not letting the media deceive you. Yes, exactly. That's good. So, Ms. Wahab, you said you've been um, doing this for four years now. Yeah. So, I have seen people who started businesses in Liberia and they didn't last a year. I am close to some of them. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure in talk, I'm just sitting the fats. Mm -hmm. It's really hard to start a business in Liberia and it's really hard to sustain one. Mm -hmm. So how have you managed as a young Liberian woman to sustain a business in a field that, that is as tough as natural hair care? Um, what, what I can say to that is um, starting a business in Liberia, essentially you have the cards stacked against you. Um, starting a manufacturing business in Liberia, you have more cards stacked against you. Um, so sometimes it's easier to say, oh, this person started a business, but you know they couldn't continue in the business. But then there are so many contributing factors to that. For example, I'm going to use my brain as an example, yeah? Nas Naturals, we're into manufacturing products, right? Majority of our raw materials we get from Ghana. Liberia produces huge amounts of rubber, like there's a huge rubber plantation here, but we still have to get packaging materials from Ghana. Labeling, if you have to label your products here with um, businesses that are already here, their cost of 
printing out one label will probably be the cost of printing out close to 10 or 100 labels if you're printing somewhere else. In order to be able to sustain your business, it means you have to understand all of these contributing factors. And just aside that, aside the fact that we do not have a big um, ecosystem for entrepreneurs in Liberia, we do not have a big ecosystem that supports local entrepreneurs, especially people like young people. Uh, I'm not even going to like specifically say female, but just young people generally, right? We do not have that kind of support system. We do not have the policies in place to support young entrepreneurs. So it's difficult, but then how do you thrive in a community like that? It's when you lean on, instead of just fighting each other, sometimes you lean on other people that know how to help you. So for example, when I started my business, I reached out to people that are my competitors to help me. Like, can we do a partnership? Can we do this? Can we do that, right? If you're going to order, say I have Nas Naturals and you have another beauty brand, right? If I'm going to order my raw materials, let's say packaging materials, because the more you buy, the cheaper it is, you can say, hey, when you're ordering, let's order together so that we can get it at a lower cost and be able to get more materials for whatever amount of money we're spending. So that you can look into partnership. You can look into building your own support system. Be able to have mentors. Mentors are important. I can say this over and over. I have one of the very, very best mentors that anybody can ask for because at the end of the day, you need a network. You need people that can get things done even if you're not in the right position to get. You're not, no one is an island, people say, right? So you can't individually sit down and run a business. Another challenge of just running and sustaining a business in Liberia is talent, getting the right talent, um, getting people that are committed to what you're doing, getting people that are committed to understanding what you're doing and even willing to learn, right? A lot of young people say they are ready to have jobs. But it's so difficult getting people to execute when you give them tax, getting people to go and go above and beyond and say, hey, even though I don't fully know this thing, everyone has access to internet nowadays. You can easily learn anything you put your mind to. You don't necessarily have to go to school to learn anything. So that extra effort that goes into being different, that extra effort that goes into researching more, knowing more, how can I contribute to this thing that I'm so passionate about, all of these factors come into play, but yeah, I can say personally for me, what has sustained me over time is one, I have a strong support system in Liberia and outside of Liberia. So I think that helps a lot and it's something that a lot of young Liberians do not have access to. Um, another one is the fact that earlier on I was willing to be humble and willing to learn from a lot of people that have already been in the field or that are already established in the um, entrepreneurial community in Liberia. So once you're willing to learn and you're willing to go above and beyond, I don't think anything else can stop you. That's really smart. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm going to learn from this. <laughs> so you talked about having a strong support system outside of Liberia. Um, and a lot of Liberians in the diaspora are thinking about ways they can own businesses in Liberia. So what are some of the steps you think um, Liberians in the diaspora can take to work hand in hand with Liberians who are based in Liberia to run businesses? I think for that, there's a huge cultural distrust between Liberians abroad and Liberians that are local. Liberians abroad, majority, or majority of the people that I've spoken to abroad, they have this mentality that Liberians that are local or Liberians that are based in Liberia only want their money, right? So when, you, when you're explaining things to them, sometimes they can kind of be, it's kind of difficult to, you know, explain and get and find a common ground. Because they too, you can't blame them. Over time, people have stolen from them, right? You'll send money back home to somebody to do something particularly, and then they'll use that money for something else and won't get anything done for you. Right. So there's that huge cultural distrust. But aside that, what I think can um, help grow the entrepreneur ecosystem with both local librarians that are based in Liberia and librarians that are abroad could be partnerships, right? How can I invest in companies that are in Liberia? Because just running a business in Liberia is one thing. Starting a business is one thing. But you actually need the capital and the funds to grow, which most young entrepreneurs in Liberia do not have access to. 
right? So how can I invest in this particular business? How can I become partners with this particular business? And then also to librarians that are based locally, that are starting their businesses, I can usually say it's better to own 10% or $1 million than owning 100% or $1,000, right? right? So um, you have to be open to partnerships. You can just take your business and sit on it and say it's my business, right? If you're looking to grow outside, especially when you do not have the funds, you do not have the finances, you do not have the talent, and everything else that you need to spend money on and you don't have the money, it's not like in other countries where um, banks are willing to support small businesses, right? You hardly find banks giving money to librarian-owned businesses. And even if they're giving it to you, <laughs> I have a friend that can say the bank gave you the money on Friday, they knock your door money, money, so you have to start paying all the same money they gave you. So, like, the time is short and the interest rate is high. So going for the money sometimes just doesn't make any sense for young entrepreneurs, especially people that are busy. So be open to partnerships, be open to learning from people abroad, and people abroad to be open to learning from people that are already in Liberia that know the ground, and also just, I know it's hard, but learn how to trust. <laughs> yeah, it's really hard to trust people, but we all have to learn if we want to be the people we aspire to be. Yeah. So, yeah, trust is a key part. And Sata, one thing that I haven't really talked about is... Uh, one thing that you haven't talked about here is um, something that a lot of women in Liberia complain about. Whenever you, you're starting a business in Liberia, as a man, it's hard, right? Based on all of the things that you listed, it's hard. But I have heard a rumor that when you're a woman and you're starting a business, it's like it's triple the hard times that men have to go through. So have you experienced things like that? What can you say? I have. Um, I have. And I don't think it's you. you okay. Being a woman is one thing. So th that's times two what a guy have to go through or men have, have to go through, right, if he's starting a business. Being young on top of being a woman is another thing. If... I don't know if you can relate, but one thing that is very difficult in Liberia and sometimes just the African setting as a whole is that older people do not trust younger people to take initiative and make the change. For example, you will come home and you tell your mom or your pastor, oh, I want to do this thing. They say, you better forget about that thing and go study your lesson. <laughs> like, even though, like, it's something that you're passionate about, it's something that you believe within yourself, right? If I have the time, if I'm putting in the time and putting the amount of work to get this thing done, I'm going to get it done and I'm going to change something else, right? There will be on you to go sit down and study your lesson instead of doing something else. So that ability of older people accepting younger people to think outside the box, it's something that has to change for young people to, you know, take initiative and um, bring on new ideas and be innovative. But yeah, to your question, women in Liberia, <laughs> I don't know if it's 10 times whatever, because I know for myself, when I started, one experience I like to give was, so when I started as an actress, especially when we started expanding and reaching out to sales points, I had this sales agent that was working for me, and he took product to a store in town. So this day, I was in town, and I went to the store trying to talk to the store manager about the product. And he was so dismissive. He couldn't even listen to what I had to say, and he was like, go call your boss, man. <laughs> and I'm right there, and then, and I'm like, I'm the boss for whoever brought the product in the store. And I don't think it's bragging. I think sometimes you have to be confident in yourself. Yeah, yes. You have to stand up for yourself as a young woman, especially because you do not have a lot of people standing up for you mm -hmm. anyways. Um, you have all of these very high walls that you have to climb. And one thing that's very supportive for me is my group of friends and my sisterhood that I've created around my friends, right? Um, I come from a family that's not very educated in a way. My mom didn't go to school. My dad just high school and later on he tried going to college. 
But because there's that education barrier, sometimes it becomes difficult for us to relate, especially when it comes to business and me um, trying new things, right? For all my mind, my mom, my mom, my pa know I should go to school, finish, get a job, finish, work, and whatever money they give me, that's about it, right? So there's that barrier. So because I know I have that gap in my support system, I've created a circle of friends that I can look up to. Like when I have struggles with my business, I talk to my friends. When I have struggle with my personal life, because as young women, like it or not, growing up, we all have this struggle with our personal lives. And then co couple with running a business, it can be very, very traumatizing, I swear. And yeah, so people like to say that, you know, women friendships can last you have to be intentional about your friendship with your girls. You have to be intentional about the sisterhood you have and the people in that group, right? Um, a friend used to say that sometimes the people you hang out with is a makeup of you as a person. Like they're going to impact and influence you, right? So you have to be intentional about getting the right people, people that will challenge you, people that, friends that will challenge you, that will question you and say, hey, Loretta, this is not your person. This is not who you are about, right? Um, you can do this and this the other way. So it helps. Okay. So um, that's really nice. Now back to the parents wanting you to go to school and then just get a job. So now I'm able to ask this next question because when I was little, I wanted to be a medical doctor. <laughs> but then when I entered 12th grade and chemistry hit me, I was like, <laughs> eh, 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 eh. <laughs> it's not for me. <laughs> so did you always want to be an entrepreneur? To be honest, I never knew what I wanted to be. Yeah. Up to now, when you ask me, what do you want to be? I do not know what I want to be. Um, but what I do know, I've always been passionate about is women empowerment. My mom didn't go to school. My mom was marginalized for most of her years. Like sometimes she doesn't even know that she's being marginalized. Because I have the education, I know some of these things. So growing up in a home like that, right, I understand and I know that no matter what, no matter what I become, no matter what I do, I want to drive the female cause. I want to make sure that women have access to some of the best programs that can help them just lift themselves out of poverty and not necessarily wait for somebody else who can carry their baggage for them. So what I did not know what I wanted to be, I do not know what I want to be, but what I do know is I want to make po positive impact on the lives of young women in Liberia and then potentially the continent. So um, Ms. Wahab, can you please walk us through some of the products that you have, the collections, and do you ship outside of Liberia? So Liberians and that's why we're interested. They can know ways to get your, your products from Liberia. Okay, so um, shipping outside of Liberia is still a struggle because we're, we do not have the facility to get our products tested. So for example, THL has this small business program that they're trying to start up, but they can only ship products that are already tested. And the Standard Lab is not currently doing that. So that's a struggle for us. But then, um, our product inventory, so when we started, we had just one product in our inventory, which was our Dash moisturizer, just one product. And over time, we've grown, and we have about 14 plus different products in our inventory. And I'll just show you some. So this is our mini package, and this package was particularly created for young women. Um, we all know Liberia is a low-income country, and people are trying to meet ends meet. So this package is primarily targeting young women in high school, young women in colleges, or someone that just want to do their hair but cannot necessarily afford our full package in the moment. So we have our palm kernel oil package that we just launched. It has like five different products in this package. Yeah, so we have five different products in this collection. Um, shampoo, conditioner, the hair oil, the scalp treatment, and then the twist butter or this peppermint scalp butter. And then lastly, we have our palm kernel oil line, which we have shampoo, conditioner, butter. This, so this package is made out of 
six different products and this is sold for $35. So imagine getting six products for $35. So shampoo, conditioner, detangler, edges, treatment, um, scalp butter, and then the hair growth oil. Okay guys, so you've seen the products that Nas Naturals has. So I am going to leave all of the information that is needed to reach out to Nas Naturals on Instagram, on Facebook, and on WhatsApp. So if you want to buy products for your family members who are in Liberia, you can just reach out to Nas Naturals. And I think if your family member is going to the US, to yeah. the US or going to you, wherever in the diaspora, they can buy your products here and they can carry it to you. So that's it. Okay, everyone. So this interview has been amazing. I have learned a lot from um, Ms. Wahab, and I'm sure you have done the same. So um, Ms. Wahab, do you have any last words to give to the audience about anything? Uh, um, what I can say is, if you're a young entrepreneur, again, be willing to learn. Think outside the box and create your own support system. So just our clients and customers out there or anybody that's listening, please keep buying Made in Liberian products. We can't say enough um, the impact it has on the country and just the impact it has on individuals because sometimes when you support small businesses, you support someone out of poverty, right? So please keep buying Made in Liberian business, um, products. Um, we want returning customers. We want people to keep trying our products and we keep trying to create better products for customers so yeah i heard from the woman so thank you all so much for watching this video if you're new here please do not forget to hit the subscribe button and tap the notifications bell see you later Bye. <laughs>